All right, what's going on, everybody? It's Monday. That means it's showtime on YouTube and Amazon Live. And today we have another guest because I think you guys like when I have guests and not just me talking. But hey, I like to listen to myself too, um, especially when we do tech time. Uh, but I do have a special guest today. I've been liking not telling y'all who the guests are because I've been thinking about my thumbnail images and stuff. And my guests can probably appreciate some of this. Like on the thumbnail images, I'm like, do I put the guest name on there? But maybe they're not going to search for the guests or maybe they will search for the guests. Like, let me just optimize for just title searches still. But we might change it up a little bit. But I got an awesome guest uh, on tonight. But I appreciate you guys for showing up here. Um, if you're here live watching, definitely let me know uh, in the chat. I want to shout you guys out. Um, that's here. I see Allison was the first one on YouTube to say hi. I see who's that? La Padre out of Texas. We got Rob here. Bara here. Okay, I got some new names in the chat. Um, that's pretty cool. And then on Amazon Live, we're streaming over there as well. So um, excited for tonight. Um, got a really good guest conversation that I want to have um, because I, I kind of think of him as like a hybrid person that we all should know. And I kind of wish I met him even sooner. But um, you guys will be in for a treat tonight. So I'm going to encourage you to ask your questions. The sooner you get your questions put in the chat, the sooner we can get to them. Because I want to make sure that we don't wait too long to the end. Because I know sometimes we get to going over here. Um, tonight, our, our sponsor. Do I have my sponsor up here? Okay. Oh, we ain't got the redirect on there. So I won't talk. The sponsor is, is one of my companies. So I, so it's okay tonight. Um, so I don't have my redirect set up there. But I got something amazing coming for you guys for content creators. Um, if you're interested in uh, creating content and monetizing that content, uh, you're looking to be an influencer, inspiring influencer, you're looking to get brand sponsorship deals, I'm going to create a community where that is the focus. So I'm excited to kind of share that with you all coming up really, really soon. Um, stay tuned. Uh, if you do follow me on Facebook, I already put that information out there so you can go check it out there. And there will be some information coming on YouTube pretty soon as well. Um, so let's get into this tonight. So tonight's topic, we're going to be talking about building multiple streams of income. OK, building multiple streams of income. Now, if you want to really leverage and tap into this video thing, I, it was kind of interesting on Clubhouse earlier today. We were kind of talking about this. To, to, we were talking about this as well. Um, think about the monetization piece that you. Uh, because it is going to be something that you want to add to what you're doing. You just don't want to show up on video and create all this content. But, you know, you look back two, three years and it's like, OK, that's all it was. And you didn't profit anything from it. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is building multiple streams of income um, and around this video aspect. So let me let me kind of introduce my guest, but I'm going to have him do it himself because he's going to do a way better, better job of it than me. This guy is amazing. Now, I know everybody's amazing, but this guy is super amazing because, like I said, he's like a hybrid where he's a content creator, but he's also on that other side of where the brand lives. Like he is the partner relationship manager and he's able to connect us as creators and the brands because he knows both sides of it so well. And I think that if we have more people in his position, it will definitely help us as the content creators understand what the brands are looking for, what they're not looking for, what's good, what's not good, um, rather than just, you know, shooting your shot and trying to figure out, well, how come nobody ever responds? Well, if you knew what they were looking for, then maybe you could better present yourself. So I've got my guy on here, Mr. Rob Balasavis out of Canada going up north what's going on rob how you doing this evening man hey monty good to be here man thanks for having me on and uh yeah really excited for the conversation um, yeah. yeah appreciate the introduction uh yeah i love this topic so uh yeah it's great yeah man i'm so glad to have you here i'm always glad to have you here you you joined me in one of my uh mastermind communities and brought a ton of yes. value in there and you know we were you know trying to understand youtube a little bit better and some of the tools and resources that are out there um Rob, introduce yourself to the audience. Let the people know how awesome you are, and then we'll jump into the conversation, man. 
<laughs> He's humble. Really, yeah, set, set, set the bar real high, man. But no, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, Bella Sabis, Monty, thank you so much again. Um, yeah, I'm the, uh, I'm the head of partnerships at a company called uscreen.tv. Uh, so we're a, we're a platform um, where you can build your memberships and programs and courses, but also we build OTT apps um, for entrepreneurs for, for, and for brands as well. And so, um, you know, I handle our affiliate program. So I know affiliate programs very well. I've um, built a couple uh, before in the past in other companies um, and also our partnership program with creators, with influencers and also with service providers and other brands as well. Um, and yeah, like Monty said, the other side, I guess, uh, of life uh, is on the creator side. So I have my own personal YouTube channel. Uh, I love creating. I love uh, storytelling, documenting, um, you know, learning all about gear and talking gear. I could do that all day. Uh, so yeah, I love, I love that side of things as well. So yeah, we can talk all about that. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, Rob, it, it's kind of funny because when we, when I learned of you when i first saw you i didn't know who you were in the communities and stuff like that i didn't know bro was already a big deal because i saw him with pictures of all these people that i follow on these digital platforms and i was like oh this dude must be a big deal and then i had that flashback <laughs> moment where i had created a video about a live streaming platform and i was ranking number one and then there's this other guy that's like right below me <laughs> and i'm like hold on this is the same guy and so uh, it was pretty cool to see like i knew you on the business side, but I was like, oh, this guy also creates content as well. So I thought that was pretty, pretty cool to kind of, you know, see other YouTubers and then actually like <laughs> connect with them and like, okay, that's a real person yeah, yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know exactly the video you're talking about and um, the brand and everything. And yeah, no, uh, otherwise, like, likewise, it was like very cool when we first met and then we started talking and I was like, man, you're the guy that's like always outranking me for this term. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was cool man it was great it was great yeah so let's get into uh rob and if you guys have questions sure. for rob definitely uh make sure you guys are putting that in there i see you caitlin i see you galen welcome um so rob right now you got the hat on got the brand at you stream you screen um tell us about the company what you're doing over there with them um so we have yeah. an understanding of what they're all about there because i'm always into products and solutions that will help make my life easier <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, with this conversation, I think where this pertains to is like monetization. And so we're talking a lot about there's lots of news around the creator economy. I mean, that's a real thing. Like creators like Monty, you're a perfect example. You know, like you are getting so many sponsorships and products and brands sending you stuff because they realize they can they see that, you know, hey, if we have a relationship with Monty, Monty has a relationship with our target users and our potential customers. So let's work with Monty through his channel. So, you know, that's that's like that's like such a perfect uh, like case study of exactly what is happening right now. Like the content creators have the attention. And so as a brand, I want to get in front of your audience. And so, you know, it's either you we, and then there's other options, right? There's paid ads, there's social media, there's TV ads, there's events and conferences. But creators, through your channel, through your live streams, through your YouTube videos, it's just becoming a more and more, uh, you know, sort of like a, a, the best way to get in front of my target audience because you already have the trust and loyalty. And, um, you know, as, as a content creator, um, you know, if you say like, hey, if you endorse this product, you know, your your audience will most likely be like, yeah, that's cool. Like, I trust Monty. I trust Rob with whatever they're buying, using. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and purchase that product as well. And so um, that's a real thing. That's just what's happening right now. Like, you know, influencer marketing is becoming a very, very like solid line item for marketing teams all over the place. So, um, you know, there's a massive opportunity for content creators. We're seeing platforms now competing for um, the content creator's attention, right? We're seeing platforms now competing and, and creating um, uh, tools and features within their platform, YouTube, TikTok. There's the creator fund on TikTok, YouTube per, uh, partner program. Yeah. They're creating incentives for creators to create on their platform versus other platforms, right? So the platforms are actually fighting for content creators' content. Um, if that makes sense, you know, um, and content creators are be becoming more and more, um, 
I would say like educated in terms of, hey, if I create on TikTok, this is the pros and cons. If I create on YouTube, these are the pros and cons, and this is how much I can make based on their programs. And so they're they're deciding like, hey, if I create on Anchor versus you know a different podcasting platform, um, here are my monetization options, right? Because wherever I create, I can take my audience with me. So it's a long answer to your question, but I think it's like a it's a it's a very like relevant conversation to have oh, yeah. as a content creator. Yeah, like I just heard masterclass in my head. Rob masterclass. All right, y'all didn't get enough out of that. Like, okay, here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, Rob, you hit on so many good things, and and I didn't think of myself as like a content creator when I started uploading videos you know because i had uploaded videos before i had gone live before but now i really see all of us as content creators if we're posting if we're going into audio spaces and you know people are listening to us we're creating content and yep. you know like you said you know we're, we're learning okay this is a real thing that when i upload a video like there's a good chance somebody might reach out and say hey can you talk about this or you want to feature this because the companies aren't creating the content and those that do create the content the viewer we want to see the authentic content we want to see other users creating the content because we don't go to youtube to look at the company's videos unless we need a tutorial we want to know like hey how do you like it and so you know i'm encouraging people to really tap into video um to show it but just tap into like this whole creator economy um as a as someone that's on the business side you know what are you looking for from content creators that say hey we want to partner with you we want to work with you because like you've worked with some heavy hitters and on the business side and i know there's always people trying to pitch something but what are you looking for from a content creator yeah, it's a good question. I think there's a there's a lot of things. It's a bit of science. It's a bit of art as well. Just to understand, like, hey, this creator, every creator is different. Like, they bring a certain set of skills. There's the certain audiences. Um, even though, let's say, I'm a YouTube expert, I may be a YouTube expert for newbies. I may be a YouTube expert for corporate people. I may be a YouTube expert for, um, you know, uh, Gen X or baby boomers, right? And so I may be a YouTube expert, but also really focusing on the productivity side of YouTube or like the live streaming or the, the, the tools, like the gear. So it really all depends. So there's a bit of like matchmaking that needs to happen. You know, when somebody reaches out, it's like, hey, cool. Like, we would love to work with you as well. Like the numbers look really good. You have a lot of subscribers, you know, the views, you know, make sense and things like that. But let's have a conversation about like, who is your audience? Like, who are you talking to? Um, and then what are the things that you're doing that may be outside of your YouTube channel? Like maybe you have a course or a program. Um, you may have a podcast or like yourself, Monty, you have, you know, programs, master classes where you know, you, you dive even more into that relationship with your audience. You're teaching them and you have interactions with them in a small group setting. Um, we like to work with those types of, you know, creators, right? It's all about, it's not just, it's not just like, Hey, let's do one video. Cool. Thanks. That's great. Here's your, you know, payout. Like let's build a relationship, um, where it's long term. you know? And so that's something that, you know, I've tried to bring from like previous roles and just like my, my type of, personality is let's build long term relationships and make it um, a relationship based partnership with with affiliates, typically affiliates and partnerships. It's sort of like transactional, mm -hmm. right? Especially you're like, there's so many brands coming at you. I'm, I'm sure Monty at your size now, like you get brands reaching out all the time. And it's like, you are also deciding, okay, do I want to work with this brand or this brand? What do they have to offer? Are they here for the long term? Mm -hmm. You know, people have asked me, like, oh, like, wh what does your team look like? How long have you guys been in business? Are you guys funded? Like, because they, like, those are the kind of conversations I like because clearly they're also in it for the long term, right? Like, if I promote and make, I make a video about you guys, will you guys be around next year or like five right. years from now, right? So, um, so yeah, so, so it's, a, it's definitely a two way thing. Yeah. And, and I like, um, I'm, a, I'm a fan, and I tell a couple of people this, like, I'm a fan of Rob balasavis because like i kind of feel like i know you as a person versus like 
that guy on the business side where it's like, okay, man, like I got to try to convince him of something. But because you're a content creator, like you understand it so well on both sides where it's easy to have those conversations and say, hey, it, what am I doing? What do I need to improve upon? Or like, you know, what's a good metrics? And I love how you kind of, um, you know, shared that, you know, that it's, you know, it's a combination of things. It's not just that one thing. And, um, and that long term relationship is so key, you guys. And that's what I've been learning is like, I don't want to just do a one video time. Like I want yeah. to have this conversation like, okay, what can we do six months from now, 12 months from now, two years from now, because there's so many, there's, there are going to be so many opportunities Rob, that arise. And I'm just like, I'm, you know, creating Facebook community. I had one company reached out and I was like, yeah, I got a community of a whole bunch of Amazon live creators. And they were like, oh, can we talk about what we have going on in your community? And I'm like, man, that's an opportunity of collaboration. Like, because mm -hmm. they want to, you know, I love the companies that are being forward thinking and want to embrace us. Um, one thing you said was the, the tight knit communities. You like working with those communities and we were seeing this rise of the nano and the micro influencers. Can you talk about, you know, this shift from celebrity status to like, hey, I don't have to have 50 million followers to actually start working with brands that I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm all for um, the nano micro influencers, right? Like, I think there's there's pros and cons, obviously. And I think if you're if you're there, like if you've got a thousand subs, five hundred subs, five thousand, you know, ten thousand, like, don't undersell yourself, right? Don't undervalue what you bring to the table, um, because most likely, like, let's say you know you know somebody with a thousand subscribers on YouTube versus somebody with a million subscribers, depending on the brand. They may be. They may want to prefer to work with you better, right? Um, you know, depending also on your type of content. Maybe you're really good on camera, right? Maybe you you're you've been using their platform for like five years and you know it inside and out, and um, you've got a lot of like use case for their platform or their product, and so the the brand you got to get to know them because they may not want. They may not need the leads. Right. Because sometimes like if a brand wants to work with somebody big, it's because they want the result is new users. Right. New customers. Right. And so, OK, well, we'll work with somebody at least 500,000 subs or more because we want to get leads. We want to get like users and sales. Sometimes a brand just wants to get awareness. Right. Sometimes a brand just needs content for their onboarding process or their onboarding series. Right. So, um, you know, sometimes a brand just needs some videos for their Facebook ads, right? So um, it really doesn't matter whether or not you have, you know, a small following or not. They're, they're looking to work with you because they like you as a person and you've got a lot of knowledge about their product and service and you would show up really well on camera. And so it's fault for all the other things except for your audience size. And so they could care less. So, um, yeah, don't undervalue yourself. Um, you know, because eventually your your audience will grow too, right? Um, I remember like one example, for example, Nick Nimmin, right? Nick Nimmin, when TubeBuddy, this was before my time, <laughs> but when, when TubeBuddy started to work with him, he was around, I think, I want to say like six, maybe 10,000 subs. Wow. And that was a few years ago. And then now he's like almost at 700,000, right? Or 800,000. And uh, throughout that entire thing, like there's been a relationship and both brands have been growing and coming up together. And so, um, you know, it's a great move by uh, by the guys at TubeBuddy back then. And so that's that's just one example, right? So. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I just learned something from you. Just thinking about why a company would go after the larger celebrities, and then why they really would go after, you know, someone of a smaller audience size. And I think, you know, some of the brands that I've worked with, that's kind of as you said that. I'm like, man that's what they wanted me for is because I'm able to teach my community how to use these certain products and these certain yep. platforms because that's that's just naturally what I do is if I can take us take a product hey this is how you connect it this is how you use it it's fun for me as the creator and then my audience that's what they're already coming to me for anyways like how do you use this um and and speaking of that I see Catherine over here on um um Amazon live she says what do you think is the most important product for live streaming? And so like that question is like ideal. 
And then when a brand knows that, okay, these are the types of questions or these are why people come to you, I can easily say microphone is the most important part because people got to see you uh, or they got to hear you. They want to hear you well. And then I could even plug like the Sure Microphone, which is a sponsor indirectly, but like I love their products. So it's not like I feel like I'm pitching a brand like, hey, you got to go get this. But like I'm authentically saying this microphone is one of my favorite microphones to use for live streaming and it's so natural and I, those have been some of my favorite deals rob like i know early on i was you know working with companies and then it felt like work and i was just like there's no communication like they weren't giving me any feedback or you got to do it this way and it was just like this is not what I signed up for, but being able to kind of have some freedom as that content creator and like, this is what my audience wants and needs. Um, and this is what they like. Can you kind of talk about the audience, like learning your audience, understanding your audience? Because, as you know, the bigger businesses, they know I create this product. This is who it serves. But I think sometimes as content creators, we don't spend enough time understanding our audience to make that relationship right. with the brand easier because if you ever say, Hey, who's your audience? And you say, uh, it's, uh, uh, and you're tripping over it. Then I yeah. think, yeah, that's not going to work well for you. Yeah. 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 No, understanding your audience is important. Um, and if you understand your audience, then you also make it, it also makes it really easy for you to um, understand which which of the brands you should be approaching um, so that it fits your audience, right? Like if your audience is a bunch of you know beginning people that are be if you're like a content creator expert, right? YouTube expert, content expert, and um, you're teaching people how to create content, start YouTube channels, and your audience is primarily beginners, then you can't be like you know approaching a brand and then pitching them like expensive camera gear, you know, black magic cameras, you know, you got to start with like, you know, the, the basics and black magic is awesome, but like it, it wouldn't be a fit for somebody beginners. Right. Um, if you then, but if you understand like, Hey, maybe it is like somebody that's, you know, a bit more advanced, they've been in the business for a while, they have the budget, you know, all those things, then you can understand, Hey, maybe black magic is it right. Or something that's more higher end. Now to understand your audience, that's like the million dollar question. We're all trying to figure out and understand our audiences. Right. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways. What you're doing now, Monty is great. Like live streams is a, it is a great way. Like live streams is basically like a free focus group, right? You can understand, yep. you can ask questions guys. If you guys have any questions, you know, then, then you start answering questions. Let us know. Okay, cool. This is it. This is it. Like this is people want to know what what gear to start with. You know, should I do should I go live on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn? Okay, I understand. This is like top of the funnel beginner questions that okay, this is it. It also helps you, Monty, like maybe then try to A uh, create your own products around this like this audience. Like, okay, well maybe I'm answering this question like a bunch of times each week. People are commenting this question, asking the live stream. I'm just going to create a course or a free program or a free course or something. So then this question is answered. And also, I'm also building my email list. I'm building my database, right? Which is very important if you're a content creator, right? Um, so yeah, understanding your audience, using things, using your, you know, this is a little bit more kind of going a little bit deep, but like using other platforms outside of YouTube, right? Using Instagram, for example, and using the questions or poll sticker, right? Like, mm -hmm. hey, what's your question? Or, you know, this camera, or this camera, or like, you know, what's your biggest hurdle when you're trying to do whatever it is? And then you start understanding your audience and then start focusing on that audience first. Yeah. So once you understand your audience, you can go to the, the brands and then confidently say, Hey, Mr. Brand or Miss Brand, Brand Rep, like, you know, you're, I love your product, been using it for years. Um, my audience also would find your product of value, um, would love to talk to you about, you know, how we can partner up or work on collaborations or other things um, so that we can get your product in front of my audience in a bigger way, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then that's how you go about it. Yeah, I love that. Um, good to see you, Alicio, here. Uh, I see you in the chat there. Um, 
I want to talk about affiliate Let's marketing. See. Yeah, I want to talk about affiliate yeah, yeah, yeah. marketing with you, Rob, because I know one thing you you told my mastermind community was you know put the affiliate links in there. You even got me one time like, hey, make sure you put that affiliate link in your, in your YouTube videos, and I need to do a better job about doing it because um, I've been slacking here. Um, but affiliate <laughs> revenue. Good. It, it, no, it's not. I'm, I'm putting. I'm losing money on the table. It's just sitting out there, and I'm not collecting. Uh, but you did an interview. It was either an interview on your podcast, or you were talking to Roberto Blake. I can't remember. Um, and for those of you all that don't follow Roberto Blake, he's got a huge YouTube channel as well. And he was just talking about the revenue he makes from his affiliate commissions, and I'm just like ridiculous yeah can you kind of explain to people like how sure. awesome it is and you know ways to think about just you know even without a small what even without a big audience how you can really tap into this affiliate commission thing especially as a content yeah. creator yeah affiliates man um you know i started I, I started really understanding affiliate marketing and affiliate marketing for content creators probably like three or four years Go. and um, it's a powerful vehicle to just start building your revenue like if you're a content creator first thing is that you need to start thinking about how you're monetizing your content like you know a lot of people don't go into content creation to um, to make a business to be honest from what I've been talking to different creators they become content creators because they want to be creative they want to tell their story you know sort of share you know advice and um you know just just sort of document and other things like outside of actually building a business but you know building a business when you're a content creator is um is so good for everybody it's good for you as a content creator because you have more resources you can reach more people with whatever your mission um your message is you can you can get more gear you can get you know so many different things to enhance your content and reach more people it's also good for your viewers because now you're able to create better content, which serves them, right? And so there's, you know, once you start talking about monetization as a content creator, there's just, there's endless ways to make money, sponsorships, merchandise, programs. But one of the things that you can do right from zero subscribers, zero followers is affiliate marketing because for the most part, Unlike, let's say, YouTube, you know, YouTube partnership program, there's no requirements. You know, YouTube partnership program, you need like a certain amount of hours, uh, views on YouTube and subscribers and things like that. Affiliate marketing, you can start from zero and start, you know, whatever you're talking about, whatever products like, you know, we were talking about um, like the GoPro because I use the GoPro when I'm vlogging. I could have a link to the GoPro like if somebody wanted to use it, you know, or like your computer or like, you know, your chair, you know, think there's so many things. Everything is an affiliate program. Yeah. Um, you know, all the tools and software as well. And so, and also, um, Monty, when you have, when you become an affiliate, the brand is usually paying attention to their affiliate partners. Who's joining their affiliate programs. I can tell you this firsthand. And the first people that they usually look to, to do brand deals are affiliates that are doing well. Mm. It's basically like, Hey, like, we don't need to take a chance whether or not this creator's audience is a fit for us, right? Because, you know, when people are reaching out, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Like, their content looks good. They have, they have a decent sized audience, but you'll never really know if it's a fit unless they're sharing your, you know, they're sharing your, um, your products or service with their audience. But if it's an affiliate, you can tell, like, okay, they can drive traffic and that traffic converts into customers well, then why don't we engage with them and see if we can, you know, sort of put, put fuel to the fire uh, of their success in as an affiliate and see if we can work out some type of partnership with them, sponsor their content, things like that, you know, um, bring them into our podcast, bring them onto your YouTube channel, you know, um, because clearly their audience converts into customers. So, yeah. yeah, affiliates is great. We could talk about that all day. Yeah, it's funny. One of the companies that um, I collaborated with, you know, I was just talking about them all the time and I was just sending them traffic. And then they were like, hey, you want to be a guest on a podcast? But I just thought <laughs> I was cool. But uh, like now that you say that, I'm like, man, maybe it was good. I was just driving a whole bunch of traffic to the website, you know, and they know <laughs> that like it was it was a good mutual relationship to have that conversation. Um, if you guys have comments, questions for Rob, definitely go ahead and put them in the chats Please, on yeah. Amazon Live and on YouTube. Like Rob is my plug. Like I feel like if I need assistance, like like Rob, what do I 
what do I put together like media kit and like all this kind of stuff that we've heard, you know, about this creator economy and trying to work with companies and brands. And, um, Rob is an awesome plug for that. Um, and yeah, you guys yeah. are putting those in the, in the comment section. Um, Rob, I got a question for you. So yeah, please. As a content creator now, put on your content creator hat. How has that been for you, man? Cause you create a lot of your own content as well and i've been following the blogs here recently so you guys got to check out you know <laughs> rob's channel as well how has that been for you kind of being on the other side of that now yeah it's been great man i love i love doing the content creator thing i want to say thing but like i just love being a content creator i think i would you know if i wasn't doing what i was doing i would i would definitely pursue full-time content creator mode you know um you know, I think it's just, I think it's the future. I think it's like, I think, I don't know. I read somewhere that it's like one of the new, like one of the top um, small businesses that's being created during the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. You know, so many content creators getting in the, getting in the ball game. Right. So um, yeah, I'm enjoying it, man. It's um, there's two, you know, there's really like, you know, there's really no other, like you could never do this like 10 years ago, like 20 years ago, you know, like, like I, you know, my, when our parents were like our age, like, this is not an opportunity, right? Um, and like you said, like it's it's kind of cool being on both sides of this con this creator economy, um, and sort of being having like you know being invited to platforms like yours, Monty, where you know hopefully I can share sort of like how a brand is thinking, mm -hmm. and then kind of translate that, and not like give the cheat sheet or like the <laughs> you know the <laughs> cheat codes to the content creators, but just like hey, like these are some best practices because. You know, we do see quite a fair bit of content creators, you know, pitching and, and things like that. And and also get to talk to a lot of content creators that have had success um, and sort of like figured out this how to win in this, you know, this new content creator economy. And it's not going anywhere like, yeah. you know, like it's not going anywhere. it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. I was uh, going through some websites out here that, you know, that influencers can sign up for, you know, companies that are doing live shopping now, because I'm into that yep. and paying a lot of attention to that. And I was like, man, like I just kept finding companies and companies and sign up for this and you go live here. You will pay you to go live. We'll pay you to post videos. We'll pay you to post pictures. And I'm just like, man, there's so many opportunities that are out here now. So and I'm just like, wow, every time you create something on social media now, you essentially could get paid for it. So, um, Make sure that you guys are paying attention to the way I got started. I'll say this. The way I kind of got started inadvertently with this brand sponsorship thing and, and monetizing, working with companies and affiliates, like I did it, I learned it just like everybody else, but I was just talking about the stuff I like to talk about all the time right. and the stuff I was using all the time. And I found that, and I find that some people that are trying to, get brand deals and affiliates and work with companies and not getting any responses they're not doing what you said at the beginning here rob was like hey if you're already an affiliate for it or you're already you know showing that you have an audience of people that like your content and they're coming to our site and buying our products i literally created a, a microphone video about a microphone that i just like and i thought it was Hey, I, I wanted people to improve their audio. They were going to these events, Rob, and you watch on Facebook Live, oh, yeah. and they're they're way up on the stage, but they got their camera in the back of the room. I'm like, that's cool. You're showing us you're at a conference and everything, but I can't hear anything. So I created the yeah. video really for that reason. Like, here's a forty dollar microphone that you can wear, yeah. connected to your phone in the back of the room, so we can actually hear you. And that company saw the video and they reached out and they're like, hey can you create more videos for us? And I'm just like, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do a video. You guys yeah. found me. But like, it was really, it all started because I was just creating content about stuff that I use and I like, and I think that's a great place for people to, you know, if you're trying to, you know, connect and build relationships with these brands, definitely do it that way. Or just reach out to Rob because yeah. he knows everybody. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I think, uh, yeah, I like what you said. Like, don't, don't overthink it. Like, that's one thing. Don't overthink it. Like, Hey, I'm going to be an affiliate. Don't make like don't overthink that. Like don't just start buying gear just so you can talk about it and stuff. Like I know that you know some folks will do that, um, but you know just look around. You already have a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of, and it doesn't have to be physical goods, right? Like there's vloggers, there's um, cooking channels, there's like all sorts of creators, and they'll talk about technology, 
and software that they use, right? They may even talk about some of the tools that they're using to uh, plan the day, like productivity tools, like every pl software most likely that you're using um, has some type of affiliate program. And so start talking about that, right? Just, and then like, you know, if it's on YouTube, if you're mainly on YouTube and you don't want to mess up your algorithms and like, hey, I'm a cooking channel, how can I talk about, you know, Notion or Trello or <laughs> like random software? Start testing it out on your other channels where it's not your primary channel. So start testing it out on LinkedIn or maybe start testing it out on um, on Instagram stories and just see, does your audience really care about this? Like, do they have an interest in this? And if they do, if you start seeing engagement, then maybe, you know, consider, you know, whether you do it as a once in a while kind of video or you insert it or you do it as like, a, hey, this video is brought to you by Monty, right? And then you get into your video, right? Or your vlog. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Just start thinking of that. I think Monty, like as a content creator, one of the things I'm starting to really like, tr like really wrap my head around is like, yes, I think gear and all that is very important. Very, very important. The next thing as a content creator, if you want to go full time, is start thinking about being a content distributor. Like yeah. where do you... Where does your content go, you know, and, and, you know, like you, you have paid programs, right? You have a paid mastermind, paid courses, paid workshops, like you're thinking about distribution, right? That's why you decided this goes behind paid walls. Yeah. This is free on YouTube, right? And so that's how you start, you need to kind of start thinking about it to get to that next level to become a full-time creator. Yeah. And, and you got to create too. So, you know, and, and that's why knowing your audience is so important. Um, I want to shout out. Cause I got Nolan here. Good to see you, Nolan. Uh, <laughs> call the Geek Videos here. Who is that? Let me know who that is. I feel like I know. I should know, but I, I don't. Forgive me. Carmelita's here. Shopping with Cheryl is here. Good to see all of you guys here in the chat. Um, Y'all are funny. Yeah. Carmelita, you're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come for you. I just. <laughs> uh, That's funny. Brian is here. <laughs> Brian says greetings all. What is the biz? biggest success story for a new you screen content creator that started in 2021 oh, yeah. Ooh, i'm gonna pass that one to you yeah, rob yeah. obviously yeah that's a good um yeah actually good timing there's um there's a video if you go to the you screen youtube channel there's a video um by this guy his name is uh, jason david and uh yeah just, he he launched i think last year yeah about a year ago uh just right at the, the beginning of the pandemic and um man he launched last year he he had like a life-threatening disease and got through that and uh you know long story short he uh he found you screen and was able to actually start a business online and now that's all he does full time and he's um he retired his wife from her teaching job and works with him now full time and um yeah he uh he creates um he created a program for um uh, for kids, uh, video program for kids, um, because he used to be a youth pastor and everything. And so, um, yeah, just, just check that out. If you go to Uscreen, uh, the Uscreen YouTube channel, it should be the latest video. I think it was just uploaded a couple of days ago. It's a great story, man. Very oh, inspiring. I've, I've got to go check that out. Stories are, stories are the way to go too, man. Like some people, like they don't realize how, how much other people will just listen to your story. And your story can just be inspirational and, and people who come in companies when brands they'll get behind the story um uh, there's a guy that i i uh, collab with on some things and like he's always just telling his story he's like i started with this i was broke i had nothing i did this and like he just tells the story and the company was like they fall in love with the story of like how he went from one place to the next and they're like yep here you go let's let's keep you telling yeah. your story to more and more people we want to get behind you and do that so pretty cool that's man right. i'm about to that's check right. that one out that's right. um yeah, yeah. okay let me, let's jump over here if you guys don't have any questions i'm gonna go into the tech side of this uh, but if you guys have questions sure. let us know um because because we always talk about live streaming a video over here rob so before we yeah. before or this year more so i've been asking all my guests to like let me know what it is that you're using to create content to go live some of your favorite pieces of gear and so like sure. i said rob i've been following the the youtube vlogs so you guys got to make sure you check out rob's <laughs> youtube uh, vlog yeah. channel Thanks. um but the first piece of gear I already knew before you even told me because I listened to your video. You said you use that GoPro, Rob. So tell me about the GoPro, why yes. you use it, what you love about that. 
Yeah, I love this thing. It's um, so I used to use um, trying to pull it out here. I used to use this, the DJI um, Pocket. So that was cool. So I used this Pocket. I used this Pocket when I was like vlogging, and I was planning to use this more, but um, it's a little. It's nice, but it's a little like. I'm scared sometimes that I might break it <laughs> and like the neck part, you know, like this neck part is like very like, I don't know. I just get scared because I'll just like put it in my pocket and <laughs> that's why it's called the DJ pocket, I guess. I'll just put it in my pocket. But I was like, oh man, if I pull it out, I just don't know. At one point, someday when I pull this thing out of my pocket, this, the neck part is going to be kind of broken to swivel. So, um, so yeah, so uh, ended up getting one of these um, GoPros um, and it's great. Like, I mean, you know, obviously you guys all know all the, like, when I think of GoPro, I think of, like, um, you know, X Games and, like, all the extreme sports, snowboarders and, like, skateboarders. So I'm like, man, this thing's surfers, right? So, like, man, this thing's probably, like, pretty heavy duty. So, um, yeah, I was like, I don't think I'll ever break it. And so, yeah, this, uh, I ended up with, um, I think there's a GoPro Hero 10 out now, Monty. Correct yep. me if I'm wrong. I yep. think that's the latest. But um, I was kind of, you know, between back and forth. and But the, the 9 isn't much has pretty much most of the things that the 10 would have the 10 has some other things but i don't think the level of the content creation that i'm doing and the level of my videos is very much just like very casual vlogging um so this is good so yeah i use this now it's great it's nice and small it doesn't like draw a ton of attention when you're vlogging out in yeah. public um yeah so uh two cameras i mean two you know sort of like um uh displays so that when you're pointing at yourself or out you know the other way forward it's great so yeah love it man yeah jarhead over on amazon says love my hero 9 works great for vlogging so and and i've been i've been looking at a way to justify some of my gear because i don't i try not to buy stuff that i don't need like now i'm at the point where i'll reach out to a brand hey would you like to send me that um but if they <laughs> don't want to send it to me then i'm like okay i'll go and get it um but I've been really looking at the GoPros because, like you said, it's not like obtrusive, like when you're just walking around. Because I love my DSLR or my mirrorless, but like that front facing on the new GoPros, and like I'm just like, yeah, I think I could go to GoPro route because they've gotten a lot better with the quality and like the stabilization and built in. And like for vlogging, I'm not looking for this perfect depth of field setup or anything like that. I just want something real easy that I can create content because the more barriers to content creation that you put in place, then the less content that you're going to create. So, um, That's it. yeah, when I saw the vlogs, I'm like, yeah, I might have to do that. Um, yeah. 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 I was also going to say that the audio is actually surprisingly really, really good. Yeah. Um, you guys, this is the setup. This is out of the box. Um, no like attachments or anything. And, um, yeah, the audio is pretty good. Uh, even on a bit of windy day and stuff like that, it's pretty solid. So, yeah. Cool. What else you got there, Rob? We talked about microphones before because you're sounding yeah, good over yeah, there. So, yeah, what kind of microphone are you using tonight? So, this is a Blue uh, Yeti Nano, I believe is the model. So, Nano is the one that I'm using now. And um, yeah, you guys tell me if it sounds okay. <laughs> sounds good to me. Um, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, this is it. Um, it's a USB mic. Um, it doesn't go through an interface or anything. It goes basically directly USB into my um, uh, Apple M1 Mini uh, that I use here. So any videos that you see here where I'm sitting down right here is usually with this microphone, um, whether it's live or recorded. Um, yeah, and it's been great. I mean, you know, like, you know it's good because, like, you don't have to worry about it. Does it. I never think about my microphone. I just like turn it on when it's time to do something or uh, record something and it works. And um, yeah, the output is good. So yeah, as long as it works and it sounds, it sounds better than, uh, you know, just that ambient noise or like, or you're like on the stage and you're far away. Like that, it just gets me. I'm about to find that video and share it with y'all one day. Like that was the, re <laughs> yes, that was the inspiration for that video. Um, yeah, I'm going to get, I'm going to get my YouTube people. Y'all are hilarious over here. Cheryl's over here talking about Monty's wearing a button up shirt. Must be a super special <laughs> show. It was funny because the the reason I went with the button up shirt today is because I did an Amazon live and I was doing a lot of walking around and my road uh, microphones, like it kept going in and out. So I was like, all right, 
let me put on a collared shirt, forgetting the fact that I'm not going to be walking around. I'm going to actually be standing in front of my microphone. So I was just like, otherwise I would have went, I would have went casual. But yeah, Rob is a super special guest, but I do that. I, I, I typically wear a t-shirt, but y'all are honored, hilarious. Honored. Yeah. Um, uh, the Barros says Rob's headphones. I'm digging them. What are those? And um, is that mic detachable? uh yeah yeah the mic is detachable i just put it on this old boom arm um but normally it would be similar to monty's setup it would just be sitting on my desk um and it's got like a little plate that this can sit on as well um so there's a you know you can put a little stand on this it comes with a stand uh, but i just put it on this guy um and then the headphones actually once a oh yeah this <laughs> this is a jbl I, I don't know the model but um, I've had this for a little while. I've got a couple of headphones that I use. Um, this one, there's also a Sennheiser that I would use when I'm editing, um, Sennheiser HD 206 um, that I use as well, Beats um, that I will use. So uh, kind of go have a couple different options for headphones. Okay, okay. Uh, like, uh, DeBarros was asking about the mic on the headphones. Yeah. yeah, I think honestly, Monty, I think this is like one of my son's gaming headphones because <laughs> I don't actually use, I don't use this part. Um, I don't use the mic on the on the headphones. Um, yeah, one of the other ones, Monty, that I use that I have is a wireless. I wish I wish I had thought about it to show it to you guys, but I think it's outside. It's um it's from uh, Logitech. It's one of their gaming headphones as well, and it's wireless. But you could never tell. Like the quality is solid. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, a couple okay. different headphones. Okay. Yeah, I got some headphones sent over to me. So I've got to um, I've got to plug them up and uh, use them. Like literally, I've got. I'm not doing behind the scenes. I got headphones over here, y'all. I got to start using this stuff. Um, <laughs> another piece you of gear. A lot of stuff in boxes, or R Rob. It's it's bad, man. It's it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> I don't know if I can. You yeah, got your I, own like Best Buy back there. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. My wife is <laughs> gonna help me uh, try to sell some of this stuff here once I get the time to just like get it up because um, you know, with it, it, we'll we'll talk about this offline. But one of the things I found is like creating content for the brands. Like some of them, I definitely want to hold on to to create more content for them later. So I don't want to get rid of it. Yeah. Um, but some of the stuff just piles up, and so it's like I almost need to charge a storage fee because it's just sitting here so um because like i still have my very first microphone brand deal and it's sitting like literally right behind wow. me I, and I'm, i will never sell that microphone just because i'll remember that that was the first one um but yeah i've got so much stuff that's that's here that needs a new home it just got to find the time to do it um and then you know technology upgrades and it doesn't help to be a techie where you feel like you always need the latest and greatest so that doesn't help add to the problem <laughs> um but yeah um one of the uh last pieces of gear that we have here as we wrap up um i think it's super important and um let's talk about your external hard drive because uh, when you're creating content you need somewhere to store it and the last thing you want to do is store everything on your computer and then your computer gets wet and your laptop gets wet and then all your content's gone. So having a backup is kind of important. So what kind of external yeah. hard drive you got there? Yeah, I use this one, uh, the Lacey. Um, I think, Mo Monty, you've got it up on um, on Amazon Live there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's the Lacey um, one. It's uh, Yeah, it's great, man. Uh, this one, it comes in like, I think, different sizes, like two terabytes, four, five, um, eight terabytes. I've got the one that's five terabytes. I've had it for, I want to say, about a year. And um, even with all the content that I create, like, I think I may be like maybe a quarter way through um, this particular one. So, yeah, lots of space. I take it everywhere. So like every now and then I'm, I've been trying to do like, you know, working at a co-working space once a week outside of this home studio. And I, this is one of the things that I always have to take because it's got all the videos, all the clips, like everything in here. And so um, when I'm editing, I, I just edit directly from here so that it doesn't take up space on my um, on my uh, on my machine. And um, yeah, it's great. It's fast. It's, it's very you know reliable. So 
and then like, it's hard to lose like with the orange <laughs> it's hard to lose and uh if you ever drop it it's got this like this rubber casing around it so it's like perfect yeah i'm, over, yeah. I'm over here grabbing grabbing mine and like this thing is, is definitely hard to lose like i love it because i use it for my atem so it's small and on my desk but yeah if i throw it in a bag it's super small and i would probably lose this because i actually wanted it with color but they don't make this i think they make it in blue or something but it's it doesn't stand yeah. out in my bag um chelsea <laughs> is asking um does that hard drive need a separate power supply no 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 yeah it just um plugs in usb um yeah so it's got a USB C. It, it comes with the wires with the cables but um yeah no you don't need a separate power supply you just plug it into your machine good question though yeah Awesome. If you guys have any last minute questions for Rob around affiliate marketing, you screen. I keep saying you stream for some reason. I know, live I stream. Live. Like yeah. You're not the only person. That <laughs> <laughs> um, collaborating with brand sponsorships. Go ahead and ask those as we get ready to wrap up. Glad to have you guys here every week. Um, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I go live and we talk about things around this content creator live streaming using video i'm big on that and then i realized i didn't turn on my new on air sign i got my little on air uh, and i bought <laughs> that adding to the shelf back there of all kinds of stuff all sponsorship stuff back there as well um but yeah if you guys have any last minute questions go ahead thank you guys for following me on amazon and hitting that subscribe button and the like button on youtube really appreciate that as well um I'm encouraging you guys to go check out rob's content over on his channel as well um those that dm me i'll, I'll probably put in the i don't know if i'm still ranking above you for that video or not rob have you looked recently <laughs> I haven't looked. I haven't looked. I'm sure you're still up there, though. Man. I, like, I that was such a, a solid look. video. Yeah, it, it so. was crazy because, I again, it was just creating content. And I and I had a deal with them. We created five videos, six videos, I think. It was I had created that video because I used the software. That was the reason I created it. I thought it was awesome software. I thought people could benefit from it. And then they saw it and then they yeah. reached out to me. I was like, that's <laughs> I was like, I, and I was thinking to myself, you know how many times I have talked about it? before i had put that video on i literally had live streamed in 2016 and i remember them being one of the very first web-based platforms that were out there and i had been talking about it on periscope and facebook and like nobody would like took me seriously until i put it on youtube and then that video just went crazy and then they reached out yeah. to me and i was just like yeah youtube is kind of where i need to put this content because it can actually be found by the people I needed to be found by. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, you know, like a real quick thing on that, on the, what you just said about just like being found by a brand. Like if you guys use a brand, like don't, don't get too scattered, right? Like if you have like, you know, let's say two or three things that you guys use or uh, two or three software, especially software. Cause um, just think about what you were thinking about when you were starting to use that software and just, show people how to do that like just record your screen i know that's very like simple and like thirty thousand foot view of how to do that well but like there's so many things that i search for um especially like i use camtasia for example for editing there's so many things i search for how do i use how do i do this particular thing on camtasia and that view may get like very little things like very little views sorry that video may get very little views but those views are very targeted and um you know especially if you're talking about like a paid feature, um, you know, when people find that, they're like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. So you can do this with this tool. All right, so I'm ready to upgrade because now I know, like, this is worth it. That's the one thing I needed to know kind of thing. And so, you know, that will help you with your affiliate, like with your affiliate relationship, right, and that traffic. So outside of the trap, outside of the affiliate um, earnings and stuff, like just being found by like the targeted people that you should be connecting with um, through those very like spe like niche uh, video topics, um, it's going to help your channel grow. So, yeah. um, you know, and then as you do that, as you do more like Monty for those search terms, you're probably ranking for like very big search terms. And so, you know, just the way that YouTube works, for example, like, you know, you can start building your authority in some of these like smaller search terms, but as those add up, then you're gonna start showing up in bigger general search terms that has more searches. I said search a lot there, <laughs> but like you just start building, you just start building up. It's like a video game, you know, it's just like 
cool. I've got like more like more points that can go after bigger yeah. uh, keywords and ter- and and uh, more more traffic. So. Definitely, Rob. I know yeah. you got to jump off here. I got two questions. Yeah, yeah. No, um, appreciate this. But, yeah, um, go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to you, Nolan, um, because I can answer that question. Debaro says, if you were starting a new YouTube or a new channel, uh, would you do both uploaded videos and live streaming? What's your approach? And I'm kind of definitely interested since you have some a lot of knowledge of the YouTube um, platform. Yeah. Yeah. So I would if I was starting over again, I would do both for sure. Um, I would I would create the uploaded videos. Um, short uploaded videos, not long, yeah. um, for specific search terms, right? Because I say short because watch time is very important, um, and so you need to start earning that watch time, right? Yeah. You know, so if you have like a thirty-minute video about you know something very general, you're not going to do well in the beginning. If you have like two, three, four-minute videos answering specific questions that people have and they're searching for on YouTube. You're going to get more, uh, more, uh, more chances to actually show up and search and be found. And so as that grows, right, as you build up your view count and your audience and subscribers, that's great. Do the live stream. The live stream is more to engage your audience and to understand them and to build community, what Monty's doing. Monty knows some of you guys by first name. Monty knows some of your channels and your content. And, he, so, and you guys know Monty outside of just his content. You you know you're calling him out on his shirt and you know stuff like that like it's cool right like so you guys have a relationship now and you're starting to build that trust outside of like the real content stuff like that so I would do both because both of them have different um, objectives and um, yeah I mean the big the big creators are doing both for different reasons right so you bring them in to their their channel and to their world through the searchable content the short uploaded content. Once they're in the um, the live streams, even if it's going to get less views, it's going to be building that trust that will then eventually turn into business clients, you know, cu- uh, customers, um, you know, brand deals, all that stuff, right? So um, I would do both for sure. Yeah. Long answer. <laughs> yeah, I would do both too. Like you said, that watch time thing is very important. That's what I would have done more of is live streaming because as long as the person's on there, that's hours you're like building versus like the the five eight minute videos but yet those short five eight minute videos are really that can take off and get a lot watch time there and people hit the subscribe button because you need subscribers too and that's the best way to get found is those short videos people you know learn very quickly if they want to be a part of your channel i love that um nolan uh i see your question a little off topic but would like to know if zoom is an acceptable platform to begin with a small bible study um yeah i think it and it also depends on the people that are there too because i learned a lot of people that aren't tech savvy they even find trouble with zoom but zoom is interactive so if you want that inner that real interaction where they can actually audibly hear each other and see each other that's a great platform and then also i love youtube as well because that content is out there and People can easily find it. I know the older generation, it's been way easy for me to point them to a YouTube video. Um, you know, just a link, hey, it's on YouTube and they can, you get the alerts and stuff like that. Um, and then I have one more Rob for you on Amazon. And I think it was related to the hard drive from, I think it's Chucky, like my camera, my, my, my uh monitor so big i can't see the whole name it says can the mini uh two terabyte be used for a regular laptop uh what was the question can a can a uh can the mini two terabyte i, I think the the mini version the external hard drive ter- two terabyte be used for a regular laptop oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it can be used with anything yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. Andrew's here. You want. I see Andrew. Hey, I, 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 I got to have Andrew, too. Andrew's one of those guys I feel like I should have known a couple oh. years ago as well, too. Because it's like you see you see people that create these videos on social media, especially like YouTube, because I'm always watching YouTube videos. And be like, it, by default, that person's like a celebrity in your mind because um, they're the ones creating the content. And then I was like, okay, now I feel like I'm part of y'all a little bit. <laughs> so uh, good to see. Yeah, good no, it's see. good. 
good. Yeah. Uh, no, Andrew's Andrew's a solid guy. Like you guys need to he knows his gear inside and out. Yeah, yeah. Definitely been following him for a while. Thank you guys for following on Amazon Live. Thank you guys for hanging out on YouTube. Rob, I know you gotta go. Any last words for the audience? Um kind of uh what I kind of prompt people with is what do you envision for like twenty twenty two? Mm, yeah, it's a good question. Um, yeah, I think the creator economy is just going to continue. It's just getting, you know, get bigger and bigger. Like I said, I think, um, you know, you guys have a massive opportunity um, to be really part of the conversation, you know, because I, like I said, I think brands are running out of ways to get in front of their audience organically. You know, everybody's, you know, they're no, not getting cable anymore. So TV commercials are out, you know, uh, people are um, buying YouTube premium. So they're not watching the, the ads. So the, there's very limited like real estate available now. And so you guys as creators, I think it's great. Um, you know, definitely look around. What affiliate program should you be part of? Um, and start thinking about, you know, I, I, Monty, I think I've said this in other, other streams, but like start really normalizing, you know, creators talking about money and like, you know, um, maybe not publicly, but with each other. Like even find a, another two or three creators in your space and start sharing sort of like, you know, hey, you know, I've got a, a brand reaching out to me. This is what they're looking for. What do you guys suggest? You know, and start really trying to figure that out because there is no like, there's no blue book for creator yep. rates, right? It's all very subjective. So start, you know, sort of connecting with other creators in your space and, and understanding what is the benchmark uh, for your value. Yeah. Yeah. I know if you use that term uh, blue book intentionally because uh, somebody had brought that up in one of my communities. I was like, oh, yeah, that thing does not give me a realistic number of what i am going to charge <laughs> so i don't know if that was intentional or not but uh, if y'all don't know what it is just dm me later um rob appreciate you for being here uh, man it's, we'll definitely have you back again um because you bring so much value to the content creator community as a whole you've been speaking like everywhere on different podcasts live stream i don't know how you do it all but you're all over the place um because it seems like you're like one of the few people that know both sides really well and can communicate that message really well so i appreciate you being here those of you all that have been watching thank you guys for hanging out watching us every monday 7 p.m eastern standard time on youtube amazon live i go live make sure that you guys uh, mark your calendar show up here and if you guys uh, want to see um, any particular special guests let me know and i'll see if i can reach out to them i'll see if i have enough clout if i don't i'll get Rob to see if he knows him and can kind of ping him into the room. Uh, but appreciate you guys for being here and you guys enjoy the rest of your evening.